What if U.S. presidents ruled until they died, starting with George Washington, of course. So he took up leadership in 1789, and then his real-life death date was 1799. So the next man in charge would be Thomas Jefferson from 1799 to 1826. That's a 27-year rule. And again, that does match up with his actual death date in our universe. We still have Ulysses S. Grant from 1869 to 1885. Oh, I didn't realize Zachary Taylor only ruled for two years. Grover Cleveland, and then Teddy, baby, Big Teddy. Wait, 1998? I don't think he ruled back in time. Oh man, 20 years of Teddy, that sounds great. I love how Roosevelt's period is literally the exact same, 1933 to 1945. That's so strange how that matches up perfectly, but then again, he did say oof in office still. We'd have Truman for 27 years throughout the Vietnam War period, then Nixon throughout most of the 70s, all of the 80s, and even into the 90s, and then still to this day, we would have Bill Clinton. I think he'd be officially the longest ruling US president at 28 years. If somehow Jimmy Carter was included in that timeline back in 1977, he'd still be ruling to this day 45 years later. Is that math right? And to think even that long of a stretch still doesn't come close to Queen Elizabeth. Some good old fascist propaganda during World War II as Switzerland is surrounded by no-no Germany, no-no France, and fascist Italy. A small nation threatens the heart of Europe. Let us partition this Babel-esque abomination. Did I say that right? This is basically what that Libyan leader Gaddafi wanted too, right? Actually, no. That proposal was way too basic, like not even interesting whatsoever. This at least introduces some new nations to the game, Liechtenstein and whatever this place would be. Probably an Italian puppet and a no-no German puppet. I'll take a thick Liechtenstein in any universe. Well, according to the author's lore, a lot of the countries just chose this ideology. There was no like invasion or anything. They just wanted to get rid of the last democracy left. A map of the Northern Hemisphere if America never existed. This is one of the most unique ideas I've ever seen. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's cool to see a flat map just without South and North North America, and then obviously all the chaos that would then take place in this Atlantic slash Pacific Ocean. But no one considers the North Pole, or lack thereof. Without Canada and Greenland, it would mean that Iceland is right next to, like, the Siberian wilderness. Now, in our timeline, the Northwest Passage is a really big deal. People are still trying to figure that out for trade purposes, save a lot of time. But would there really even be a focus on the North Pole without the Americas here? There would just be no reason why the UK can't just sail straight across and get their goods to Japan or something. What if the Roman Empire's Medinostrum was not the Mediterranean, but the Baltic Sea? So basically, instead of the Roman Empire being a normal, like, horizontal video, it's decided to go vertical video status just to keep up with all the TikTok kids. I actually didn't even realize that this Medinostrum term just means the Mediterranean Sea. So that's what they pretty much built their empire around. But in this universe, they've built their empire around the freezing cold waters of the Baltic Sea and maybe, like, the North Sea as well. They just, like, leave the Gauls there what happens to um, Carthage and stuff? Would Rome still be their main focus? I don't see how logistically, you know, like the Mediterranean is easy to move around because like a sea, you could just do all that. How would you get like Roman stuff all the way to, I don't know, northern Sweden? We need to stop asking questions, logical questions. That That isn't, this isn't a place for that. This is cool. It works also as just like a massive Holy Roman Empire. That's like the most Roman thing ever, isn't it? A very strange world where the leader of China resigns and announces leave of the Socialist Labor Party. I guess there was a lot of corruption or something. Then this election is held in 2008 in what looks like a democratic China. Oh yeah, we have the Socialist Party and the Kuomintang, and then Taiwan is involved in this. So they voted for the Socialist during this year. He has won the presidential race, according to Insider. But then in 2012, the former Chinese leader said, enough of this. He starts his own People's Party, a Green Party, and wins in a pretty decisive way. 51% of the vote, while these other ones just like half. What the hell is this? Taiwan also voted Communist. Populist Z Jinping is winner in Chinese presidential election, according to the New York Times. I love reading about these old histories that I literally have never even once thought of in my entire life. Oh, and also this guy was sentenced to life in prison because of his corruption. This man is very popular for the coming years, too. There's a whole lore behind all these posts. Man, this thing is in-depth. I like it. A mega European Union, or I guess if Russia just completely collapsed? Wait, this isn't even a European Union. This is the United States of Europe. This is a U.S. version of this continent. The U.K. is back in it. Turkey's in it. A lot of Russia 
I don't know what happened to Russia. Nobody is not in it. Even Switzerland is not in it. That's, come on. I've also divided all of these former countries in really interesting ways. I'm gonna assume they're based off population, but who knows. Almost 750 million people live here with a GDP of 20.5 trillion. Maybe in like 100 years, it's possible. The world map with a devastating Ukrainian victory. Not only do they retain all their territory here in Eastern Europe, as well as get back Crimea, the Russian separatists have been crushed in the Donbass region, but they also take this stuff right by the Caucasus Mountains like Dagestan, and they cut deep into Russia north of the Caspian Sea. That would be a very scary Ukraine, and they would add, I don't know, what would they, double their population or something like that? Even considering the hundreds of thousands of multi-universes out there, I don't know if a single one has this world play out. Still a fun map though. The Indigo Wall, or the United European Army's defense capabilities along the Russian border. So this is a future in 2025 where they have about 1.5 million active personnel, 2.5 million reserve personnel. And inside the European Defense Force is more than just the European Union. It includes Moldova, Norway, Georgia, Albania, Ukraine. I'm surprised they didn't get Turkey in there somehow. This is a world where apparently Ukraine has been divided for at least like three years now. But Finland is a part of this indigo wall. Maybe they've joined NATO too, who knows. Oh, the EU also is occupying Kaliningrad. How the hell did they do that? That'd be kind of difficult. That's kind of the big mystery I want to find out. Oh, Moldova finally got this weird river nation thing back. So there's an invasion from the Romanian or Bulgarian coastline. They occupied the tip of Crimea and they provided a little blockade right here. George is involved too because they still have a grudge from 2008. There's a couple air raids going on deeper into Russia. Also a campaign beginning to push inside of Belarus. Oh, Russia has formed a union with Belarus apparently. And I'm assuming the occupied portion of Ukraine as well. Wait, is that Kazakhstan that's also involved? It looks like it. So the Russians have formed their union. It's just not the Soviet Union exactly. I wish this map expanded. It looks like they have something in Central Asia. Asia. But this goes pretty deep in there, talking about naval bases, forward infantry centers, air forces, things like that. This is extremely detailed. It's really good stuff. The nine alternative partitions of India, or British Raj, basically. So in our world, this former British colony broke up into India, Burma, and then Pakistan. And then, you know, obviously this ended up becoming Bangladesh. But here are some alternatives to the way that could have gone. We have the Princely Federation and the Union States of India. There's no way this would have stay like that. I'm pretty sure if we saw Bangladesh rip away from Pakistan, the same would happen to some of these random spots, I think. Ooh, then there's the Kaiserreich partition. Oh, the trifecta right there. The Frick Pakistan timeline partition. Muslim nightmare. Wait, I just realized Burma is not included in this map. Realistic princely state partition. The Frick India timeline. Whoa! Yeah, you could say that again. It's completely divided. Maybe you could do like a United States of India though. The socialist partition divided from west to east. I'm sure like China and the Soviet Union probably had something to do with this side. Loving this reference to like kind of Austria-Hungary. We've got a Hindu-Muslim India and then minority India, just everyone else. Oh, talk about cursed. And then finally, just the Hindu nightmare. I like how we had all versions of this region, all different dreams and nightmares. Makes it more fun. The creator of this post also made a part one, which I think I reviewed back a while ago. It really makes me think there's a lot of different ways India could have gone. Instead of full-on federalization, the EU becomes a union of sub-alliances. Some of these actually exist. Some of them are made up. So we have Italy, Greece, Croatia, and Slovenia all on a team. Then once again, the Iberian Union is back between Spain and Portugal. The Franco-German Federation. Oh boy. Then there's Benilux, the lowland countries coming together. The Visegrad group. Oh yeah. Talk about homies. Black Sea Legion, which is just Romania and Bulgaria. Oh, you should include some more into that. Wait, what's wrong with Austria? Is Austria just staying neutral? So is Ireland. Baltic Assembly and then the Nordic Coalition. Yeah, you need to get more people in the EU just so the Black Sea gets more friends. Just take in Turkey. I'm sure that'll be fine. I wonder how this would actually go. It seems like there could be a lot of fighting. Here we go, the Republic of New Finland. Very strange, this doesn't sound all that different from another place called Newfoundland. It's almost too perfect. Maybe Finland should have really gotten this. So a Finnish colony exists in our modern day Canadian territory, about half a million population. We of course got these old Finnish names back here, which I'm not gonna be able to pronounce a single one. Interesting flag and coat of arms. I'm liking the, uh, what is, I don't think that's a penguin, but it's probably a part of the penguin family, isn't it? I don't know. I shouldn't talk about zoo stuff. Port and land. I can probably pronounce that one. I don't know exactly when Finland would have the time to come out and get a colony. I mean, for the most part, uh, they were controlled by Sweden or Russia. Still nice to think about though. Yeah, I'm just really digging that pun. You've heard of the Great Lakes. Yes, now get ready for the Greater Lakes. If the Great Lakes were basically the Mediterranean of North America, we'd also get thick Wisconsin, thick Michigan, and like a big old East Coast, 
I guess. Oh no, Ohio is going to be massive. Not Ohio. And I'm assuming in a universe like this, this continent would be really divided. A lot of war breaking out. We have got like the Canadians coming, attacking the US. Is this Spanish controlled Mexico down here? I guess the United States was not able to complete their manifest destiny with these huge lakes in the middle. Is the brown nation uh, Russia or somebody? Maybe they continued their expansion from Alaska and then British controlled Canada is out here just trying to take everything up. Those would be some pretty big scary lakes. I don't know if I could handle that. And big thanks to my Patreon supporters. Young Waifu. Fat Nuts. Gerbil Boy. Why am I doing this? Sussy Melody. Rye the Pie. Nora the Bald Free Smiley Philip Lover. Philip R.F. Orton 5610. Drew's Argentinian Alex Whitley Grandpa. Alex Whitley's Mega Chad. Alfonso M6. Of Fat Norwal. Arian After Hours. Barnes Bring CW. Back Canadian Ball. Union. I Stole Drew's Pet Louise. Dog. Luxembourg Majestic Lover. Unicorn. Max Cooper. Mick Blorf. And Mimoshiki.